In this video, we'll be talking about immunosuppressants. As the name suggests, these category of drugs suppress the immune system's activity. Immunosuppressants are used clinically for different contexts, such as to prevent graft rejection, or in the treatment of autoimmune disorder, or after organ transplant. Now, our immune system has different components, such as adaptive immune system comprising of T and B cell, the innate immune system, and the connecting players between the two immune system are dendritic cells and macrophages. So the immunosuppressant mostly act by inhibiting aspects of T and B cell activation and development. So this is important to know. As we go along, we would understand this bit in much more details. Have you ever wondered why our own immune system generally doesn't attack our own body? Because there are stringent quality control tolerance mechanism, which ensures first no autoreactive T or B cell is generated. And by mistake, if something is generated, it is eliminated. This is how immune tolerance act like a safeguard mechanism. Sometimes immune tolerance mechanism goes wrong and this error lead to production of cells that attacks our own body instead of protecting them. And that's the basis of autoimmune disorder. Now all these immunosuppressants, that is why uh, suppress several aspects of T and B cell development. There are different categories that we are going to discuss in this video like calcineurin inhibitors, mTOR inhibitors, IL-R2 ant antagonist, then nucleotide synthesis blockers and the corticosteroids. So all these categories would be discussed in great details. We would talk about their mechanism of action, their usage and the side effects associated with them. So brace yourself and stay tuned till the end. First category of drug that we are going to talk about is basically calcineurin inhibitors which inhibit a molecule known as calcineurin. This is a calcium dependent phosphatase molecule. Uh, so basically its job is to remove phosphate group. Clin clinically it is used for several purposes but before that let me tell you that calcineurin is involved in the process of T cell activation. So once calcineurin is blocked the T cell activation is blocked. It is clinically used to treat psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis and also it is used in terms of uh, immunosuppression after solid organ transplant. But it has several side effects like nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, hirustism and gingival hyperplasia. So one thing we have to understand though these are very potent they have high nephrotoxicity and it can also decrease the renal function in normal person. So in order to understand calcineurin inhibitors mode of action, we have to understand how the T cell activation works at the first place. Because T cell activation is the key biological process that is targeted by this drug. So T cell is activated when MHC class 2 molecule bound peptide is presented to a naive T cell by the antigen presenting cell, in this case a dendritic cell. So first interaction is TCR or T cell receptor and MHC2 interaction that brings the activation signal 1. Second signal interaction is CD28 and CD8086 interaction that brings out the signal number 2. And the third signal is an autocrine signal coming from the T cell itself. So it's secret IL2 and that IL2 act via IL2 receptor that gives the T cell the proliferative capacity. If all these signal align together properly, then the T cell activation would happen. Now let's see how these aspects of T cell activation is abrogated by calcineurin inhibitor. So we have to delve into details. So after the TCR is activated, TCR would lead to the activation of enzyme known as phospholipase C or PLC. PLC would cleave membrane phospholipids like PIP2 and it would produce IP3 and DAG which are actually second messengers. IP3 would actually bind to the IP3 receptors in the endoplasmic reticulum. IP3 would lead to calcium influx into the T cell cytoplasm. So calcium would be elevated and calcium dependent molecule CAM can sense the calcium. Now CAM is really important to activate calcium dependent kinases and phosphatases. One such phosphatase that we are going to talk about and this is the center stage of our understanding is calcineurin. How does calcineurin work and how does calcineurin really help in the T cell activation? Well T cell activation requires IL2 that we talked about it. So obviously there is a transcription factor that produce IL2 that is known as NFAT. 
So this N fat transcription factor can only translocate into the nucleus when the phosphate group is removed. Then it can translocate into the nucleus, start the transcription of IL-2. And then IL-2 is auto autocrinely uh, sensed by the T cell itself. So calcineurin inhibitors obviously inhibit calcineurin. So we can understand if the calcineurin is inhibited, what would be the consequence? So let us try to recap that. So uh, inhibitors like cyclosporin and uh, tacrolimus, all these actually inhibit the calcineurin. So obviously when calcineurin is in active, then the n fat transcription factor cannot move into the nucleus and start the transcription of interleukin 2. So obviously interleukin 2 mediated autocrine signaling is off. That means T cell activation is abrogated or halted. This is how cal calcineurin inhibitors work. So cyclosporin actually binds with a molecule known as cyclophilin to form a cyclosporin cyclophilin complex that prevents calcineurin. Tracolimus actually bind with a molecule known as FK506 binding protein or FKBP. They form a complex and prevent the calcineurin activation. Moral of the story, calcineurin is the node point. Once calcineurin is inactivated, in fact cannot be uh, dephosphorylated and in fact cannot go to the nucleus to do the transcription. So in fact mediated transcription of interleukin 2 is abrogated. Just to recap, calcineurin inhibitors like cyclosporin form a complex with cyclophilin and prevents IL-2 transcription. Clinically, it is used to uh, treat psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, etc. But it is potent nephrotoxic molecule. It can lead to hypertension, hyperlipidemia, neurotoxicity, gingival hyperplasia, and hirustism. So trocolimus also act via blocking the calcineurin and preventing IL-2 transcription. But it uh, does that with the help of FKB protein. And now it's clinically used after organ transplant to suppress the immune activity. Then it is having a uh, lot of like side effects, which is similar to cyclosporin. But uh, basically it has no signs of gingival hyperplasia or hirustism. Now let's talk about a group of drugs that are immunosuppressant and they are known as mTOR inhibitor. mTOR signaling pathway, mTOR AKT signaling pathway is really important for growth and division. So let's say the IL-2 signaling is proper in a normal context and IL-2 signaling would activate mTOR that would lead to several transcription factor producing genes and proteins which are involved in cell proliferation, growth and cell division. That is really important for T-cell context because T-cell would proliferate and divide, make more T-cells. Now, mTOR inhibitor obviously inhibit the mTOR activation. So mTOR activator is actually molecularly rapamycin, which is a in potent inhibitor of mTOR. So this is a sirolimus. This is the name of the drug. But anyway, we can understand when mTOR is uh, inhibited, the proliferation or division is blocked. So no autoreactive T cells can be generated. But mTOR activators, mTOR inhibitors has also many uh, side effects like pancytopenia, insulin resistance, hyperlipidemia, but it's not nephrotoxic. Pancytopenia is like overall decrease in the blood cell. It is understandable because any blood cell that has to be generated has to be uh, coming from the hematopoietic stem cells. So if the hematopoietic stem cells, which are highly dividing cells, are not dividing much, then it's a problem. And they are unable to divide because sirolimus would not discriminate between T cells or a hematopoietic cell. They would block the mTOR pathway in many cells which are dividing would be actually affected. So that is why a combinatorial therapy is always used. Then we talk about the IL-2 receptor antagonist. By now we understand what IL-2 receptor does. It binds to IL-2 and give the co-stimulatory co-stimulatory signal for T cell activation. Now, obviously in a scenario when IL-2 is blocked by let's say a monoclonal antibody, which is known as baciliximab, that can prevent the IL-2 mediated co-stimulatory signal. 
Now, if there is no co-stimulatory signal, there would be no division of the T cell or proliferation. So this is how autoreactive T cell generation is prevented. But there are side effects like edema, hypertension, tremor, but mild side effects uh, compared to many other immunosuppressants that we discussed earlier. Now there are category of drugs known as nucleotide synthesis blocker. You have to understand why nucleotide synthesis is really important in this context. In a moment, it would be clear. So this is a whole performer of uh, immune re response towards any antigen. So antigen first has to be recognized by the T cell and that is done by the interaction with the antigen presenting cell and the T cell. Then T cell gets activated, activates B cell further. So activated and T cell and B cell are the main culprit for many autoimmune disorders. Activated T cell and B cell would undergo rapid proliferation and grow. Now this is important. Rapid proliferation events are actually targeted by nucleotide synthesis blocker. But how does that add up? Any cell which is dividing rapidly has to replicate its DNA before dividing. So DNA replication requires a lot of nucleotides to be synthesized. Now nucleotide synthesis blockers would prevent this particular step. So nucleosized biosynthesis is blocked. That means DNA replication would be abrogated and proliferation would be abrogated. So this is how the category of drug nucleotide synthesis blockers work. So obviously the T cell B cell proliferation is the event that is blocked. Now there are two drugs such as uh, azithropine. So this particular drug acts by blocking nucleotide synthesis and it's basically uh, a precursor of 6 mercaptopurine. So it's used to treat rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, glomerulonephritis and other autoimmune conditions. But it has some side effects. It would lead to pancytopenia, which is expected because any blocker that blocks the nucleotide synthesis would affect any cells which are ra ra rapidly dividing, such as precursors of the blood cell or the intestinal cells. So obviously they would also have intestinal dysbiosis. Then there are drugs like uh, mycophenolate, mef mofetil, mycophenolate mofetil. This particular drug inhibits IMP dehydrogenase enzyme. This enzyme is crucial for purine biosynthesis. And ag again, for dividing B cell and T cell, these drugs would be really useful. These, these uh, particular enzyme would be very useful. So when this enzyme is blocked, T cell, B cell proliferation is blocked. So this is basically used uh, for glucocorticoid sparing agent in rheumat uh, rheumatic disease. It has side effects like GI upset. Again, why GI upset? Because intestinal cells divide a lot. Pancytopenia, why? Because the blood cell precursor, the hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell has to divide before it can give rise to uh, blood cells. There could be hypertension, nephrotoxic and neurotoxic effect as well. Also, it has to be remembered, this is associated with invasive CMB infection. Last category of drug that we are going to talk about is cortisol or glucocorticoid. Cortisol uh, basically has potent, uh, it's known as glucocorticoid because it basically elevates the glucose level in the blood. But besides being a glucocorticoid or elevating level of glucose, it has potent effect on the immune system. So cortisol prevents the active hyperactivity of the immune system by many means. So it decreases inflammation, increase the risk of infection sometimes. So glucocorticoid is highly used for the, the patients which are undergoing grafting, tissue grafting. So glucocorticoid prevent B cell and the T cell to produce cytokines. That is how the glucocorticoid work. So glucocorticoid basically, especially cortisol, prevents dendritic cell and T cell mediated cytokines such as interleukin 12, interferon gamma, interferon alpha, etc. It also prevents the cell type called Th1 subtype and promotes the cell type called interleukin 10, uh, promotes the production of interleukin 10 which is an anti-inflammatory inflammatory cytokine. So now we can understand how cortisol works but there are potent side effects. Basically um, there could be demargination of the WBCs caused by artificial leukocytosis. There could be adrenal insufficiency also if the drug dose is not properly determined or stopped abruptly. So overall in this video, we talked about calcineurin inhibitors, mTOR inhibitors, IL-2R antagonist, nucleotide synthesis blockers, and corticosteroid. We discussed all of their mechanisms step by step. So I hope this video was enjoyable. 
informative. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Get notes and flashcards in our website. Where would you get the link? In the description. You can download many of these flashcards just for free. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Links are also provided in the description. You can support our channel using Super Thanks. Please show us some support. We need uh, your support to make these videos. And please follow all of our channels. It would be useful for you. See you in the next video.